Hello, I'm Christopher Heaton. I'm culture editor at The Independent. I'm here with the rest of the culture team, Jacob Stallworthy, Clarice Lockery and Jack Shepard. Um, today we're talking about the Oscar nominations, so uh, let's get right down to it. Um, first up, Best Picture. Uh, nominated are Arrival, Fences, Hacksaw Ridge, Hell or High Water, Hidden Figures, La La Land, Lion, Manchester by the Sea and Moonlight. Um, so guys, I mean, any films we're surprised that made the list, surprised didn't make the list? Surprised, but happily surprised, I'd say, Arrival, straight off the bat, because uh, ever since the nomination list got extended uh, from five to up to ten, mm. uh, you can kind of see the films that wouldn't have been there had it not had that not been the case, and I think Arrival, for me, jumps out as one of them. And it's just so good, because Arrival re actually was, for me anyway, the best picture, or one of the best pictures of last year, Big. so a <laughs> huge statement. I'm going to go straight in there with the bold statements. Talking about what you were saying about the numbers increasing, it seems like uh, Hell or High Water is another one that's benefited from that, but wouldn't normally make it on that kind of list, I think. It doesn't have the grandeur of necessarily a best picture film. Yeah, completely. I think they've kind of gone through the, through the list and they've gone, what's worthy, of the, what's worthy of this but will never win? And Hell or High Water is kind of fodder for that, isn't it? Yeah, mm. and same for Hidden Figures, which is really nice because it's just the kind of film that rarely gets this amount of coverage. So just for those two films in particular, like it's going to do wonders for them actually getting people out to see it. So it's kind of nice yeah. to see that. Yeah, I thought like Hacksaw Ridge is quite an interesting conclusion in itself as well, inclusion, because it's just it also seems kind of one of the ones which is kind of thrown on his a uh, action-packed Mel Gibson film um, with Andrew Garfield, who surprisingly has the leading actor role, even though I don't think it was his strongest performance. Um, I mean, but he, got, yeah. he got six nominations, which is, yeah. I never would have expected uh, when, I, when we, we saw the film. Never would have expected. Perhaps it's a more American thing. Well, it's, it's funny because the film is kind of two halves. You've got that kind of Lifetime movie opening half, and then it just yeah. turns into like Rip Roy, like, blistering war, horrible, horribly visceral film. And I think he's, Mel Gibson's thrown everything at it, and it's worked. Yeah. <laughs> It's like a, it's an incredible piece of editing, if nothing else. I don't know if it's best picture. Through, but. No, not, not best picture material, I'd say. And then there's a few that maybe we're surprised not to see there, like Silence. You know, you would expect a Martin Scorsese film just to get <laughs> to get a best picture nomination because it's Scorsese. But um, completely, it's just kind of fallen by the wayside that film a little bit. Just really hasn't landed with people in the way that everyone expected. I guess. I think it's too. It's almost like too complex, which I think is why it's been nominated for best cinematography and nothing else, because people have gone. I know it's a good film, but I don't understand it, so I'm yeah. just going <laughs> to nominate it for cinematography. There we go. Yeah. It's kind of nice, that because it's nine nominations. It's kind of nice they've not done the full ten, in a sense, and they've just kind of... Give, give, I mean, maybe it's kind of them it's, going... It makes some restraint. Yeah. yeah, I guess, but, uh, but I'm really happy it didn't go to Nocturnal Animals, because I'm not oh. a fan of that film <laughs> at all. I like that film uh, a lot. I thought it was brilliant. Yeah, brilliant. I think, and, yeah, I Ooh. thought it was very good. And I can see, because, you know, it's got... It's, up for nine BAFTAs, and it's it totally. I think it's a great film. BAFTA got it wrong. And I don't understand why it's up for. It's more it's more adventurous as well, isn't it? And original in, in the way yeah. it plays with narratives, as opposed to something like Hell or High Water, which is a good film. I like it, but it's very straightforward. Your kind of classic, gritty small town crime. Yeah, it was another neo western, which yeah. doesn't really. I feel like it doesn't add anything to the western genre. I'd love to know what Nocturne Animals adds to, to whatever it tried to be. I, I just don't even know. But yeah, not a fan of that. It tried to be pretty and it succeeded. It, it succeeded, succeeded very well. But Tom Ford didn't even get a director nomination. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I feel, like, I feel like it's worth... I'm not sad that it hasn't appeared, um, but Deadpool, I know a lot of people were talking about it, turning up and that this was going to be a big deal because, you know, it got so many Golden Globe nominations. It got like Critics Award nominations, Directors Guild Award nominations. Like it was getting every other kind of step that you need to get to the Oscars. So it's actually kind of surprising not to see it on the Best Picture list, even though it would be a massive surprise for it to be there. Mm -hmm. So it's just kind of interesting. I'm not sad though. Sad I'm okay it. with I'm not that. Sad about <laughs> it. It's not sad though. It would have been a good opportunity for them to maybe do it because they actually extended the nomination list. Uh, when The Dark Knight didn't get nominated in 2008 or 9, the following year. Um, so it kind of, it's the kind of film that would, it kind of warrants the, the reason why they did that. 
Yeah. Um, I mean, again, I'm not sad about it no. either. But I think there's a lot of underlying hatred for those kind of comic book superhero films, like in Hollywood, though. So it's maybe not surprising because these are all not voted for by yeah. Hollywood that they haven't haven't picked it out. I think it's hard for a film like that to get awards recognition these days, even though in the past we've had a couple of them sneaking their way into the to the Academy Awards. Yeah, I feel like it got this far just because everyone really likes Ryan Reynolds. <laughs> like, like he's been. I wouldn't be surprised if they do some separate like a salute to Ryan Reynolds <laughs> just to say thank you in some way because people really love him. Yeah. <laughs> Change the face of movie marketing. Yeah. <laughs> just five minutes for Ryan Reynolds. <laughs> everyone stand up and clap. <laughs> and then maybe one other one is uh, Patterson, which. I, I absolutely loved. I know Jacob did as well. Did, I don't. Yeah. I don't necessarily think it's best picture material in terms of winning the award, but I think it could like comfortably sit on that list. Mm. Maybe in space of Lion, perhaps. I don't know, but I, I do agree that it um, may be uh, a bit of an omission, actually. Mm. Yeah. It's too good. It's too Just good too good. <laughs> as is, everybody wants some, obviously. Yeah. But you know, let's not go there. <laughs> mm. And in terms of who we actually think is gonna win best picture. I don't know, a long time ago I put some I, I thought that Moonlight might sneak in, but I kind of don't think it's gonna happen now. Yeah. I hope it does. I think that that's probably my favourite film of last year. And as great as La La Land is, which I think we pretty much all agree will probably end up winning, I think it does something slightly different and it isn't so here, look how great Hollywood is and that's basically what La La Land is. Yeah. I think Moonlight's gonna win. I really do, and I have for quite some I knew, obviously, they were both going to be nominated, and I have for some time thought that Moonlight would win, and I'm not just saying that because I really hope you win your money, but that would be great, because, you know, pints and all that. But I think Moonlight will win. I think it's, um, uh, we'll, we'll talk about director in a bit, obviously, but I think that's kind of more La La Land scene, but I think Moonlight is the, the kind of like affecting drama that every now and then the Oscar just likes to hand it to. Because it, 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 it's quite obvious that it, they celebrate films that love Hollywood or, or you know, pay homage to the films of yesteryear. And I think every now and then it's good to kind of get into a film like Moonlight. That's uh, kind of my, my issue with it in a way, though. Um, it's, I don't think it's a worthy film. I don't think it is Oscar bait, but I think in the same way you say how La La Land's another one of those films of, like, Hollywood self-congratulating, mm. I kind of feel like M Moonlight's a little bit another, another film about a marginalised character who's had a difficult time in life. It's got, it's a, it feels like a, not by the numbers, that's doing a disservice, but I don't know if it's, it's better than La La Land, which personally, even though I, I, like I had some reservations about it, I think is like an incredible piece of work and definitely, I, no think, I think for me, deserves, deserves the award. I think for like Clarice probably feels the same. Yeah, I mean, I'll be very happy if it wins. I think it would be a good and like interesting surprise if Moonlight won, but I think it's pretty much considering La La Land has 40 nominations and that's tied the record with both Titanic and All About Eve, which both won Best Picture in those years. Mm -hmm. I think it would be like an insane surprise if Moonlight won. Yeah, I think it would be a huge upset. Um, so moving on to actor in a leading role, we have um, Casey Affleck for Manchester by the Sea, Andrew Garfield again for Hacksaw Ridge, Not Silence, um, Ryan Gosling for La La Land, Viggo Mortensen for Captain Fantastic, and Denzel Washington for Fences. Kind of a quite a tight category that I can see a lot of different people coming over with that one. Yeah, I mean the surprise is obviously Viggo Mortensen of Captain Fantastic again, just because it was released outside of awards season and wasn't never really bandied around as a as a favourite. Um, I'm happy to see him there because I think it's some of his best work that film, um, and I think the film's great. But yeah, uh, other than that, not really any shocks uh, or su or surprise omissions in terms of the best actor. Yeah, I think Casey's basically a lock so, on that mm, one. Yeah. I just can't imagine anyone else. He's just won everything so far. I think a lot of the acting categories seem very like set already, but I guess there's always room for surprise. But <laughs> a lot of those are quite intense performances as well from Andrew Garfield, uh, Denzel Washington, whereas Casey Affleck's really kind of reserved and understated in Manchester by the Sea, which I think a lot of people will appreciate and which is probably what we'll, we'll land him at. Mm. Um, I find it strange that I know we said Patterson missed out, but uh, Adam Driver in that film was phenomenal. Yeah. And he's just nowhere to be seen here. Or he hasn't, he wasn't Golden Globes or anywhere, which is such a shock because he just, for, I mean, that film's about a guy who drives a bus and he makes the character so lovable and likable and makes that entire film just enjoyable. Mm. It just seems bonkers that he just hasn't had anything. Mm. Yeah, he is a future Oscar winner, isn't he, as well? So you're right, this would have been a good time for them to maybe just go, yeah, 
one day you'll get it, mm. but you won't this year, but you can have a nomination. <laughs> That's true. What do, you, what do you guys think about, like, um, like Ryan Gosling you see, in La La Land? I was going to say, just in, if, if they go more down the route of let's give La La Land as many awards as possible, rather than, then I could, I could see it getting it, to be honest. Be I mean, but it depends how much you value someone learning to play the piano for three months and whether <laughs> you think that deserves an Oscar. I mean, he's great in it. He's charismatic as always, but he's not, he's not doing anything outside of his skill set, I don't think. But no. I could definitely see him, definitely see him winning it. Yeah, I, th I think it would be a weird upset in a way, but yeah, I can as well. But you I think no, I, do, I do think yeah, personally, it's Casey's to, to yeah. Well, you can never count on Denzel Washington because he's <laughs> fucking Denzel Washington. <laughs> he's Denzel he's such a Washington. force. <laughs> I also think they kind of gave him the actor. They were even going to give him the actor or the director nomination, and yeah. they gave him the actor one because he's he's just so great, isn't he? He's so great. An actress in a leading role. We've got Isabel Hooper for Elle, Ruth Neger for Loving, Natalie Portman for Jackie, Emma Stone for La La Land, and Meryl Streep for Florence Foster Jenkins. I completely forgotten that film existed until now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, Hugh didn't get his nomination for Florence. That's hilarious. Yeah. He was gunning for that. He was. <laughs> <laughs> Never happened. <laughs> It's just, Mer it's just Meryl Streep for blank, just whatever. I'm sure half the people didn't even watch Floris once. They were like, oh, it's Meryl Streep in a movie this year. I just put it down. It's true, actually, yeah. yeah. It's just obligatory at this point. If she's in a film, she gets nominated for an Oscar. Even she's like, Don't what? Don't it. Yeah. <laughs> like, I feel like next year she's going to start just being in things specifically to try and not get nominated for an Oscar. Like, she'll be in Deadpool 2 and be like, try and nominate me now. <laughs> Jane Grandma will be there. Yeah. Poor Robert De Niro. <laughs> <laughs> Why haven't they made that sequel yet? I, I mean, know. That's going to happen, yeah. surely. Try, yeah, green like that. I think the, the most glaring omission for me was Amy Adams mm. in Arrival. I thought she was phenomenal in that film. And as you said, it's just a brilliant sci-fi, but... I don't know why that would go against her. I think it, it seems like a bit of a snub. It is, they nominate her all the time. Every mm. year, all the time. And then she's in Arrival and Nocturnal Animals. And staring at a green screen's yeah. hard, guys. Like, it's, yeah. it's not like <laughs> when you're not looking at anything. Yeah, that is a, that is a real mission. I mean, I could, see, I could see Natalie Portman winning it. I, I, Jackie was not a film I particularly enjoyed, but I thought her performance in it was incredible. And it's, a lot of people were talking about it. I think she's brilliant in that film, yeah. She's just so uh, enthralling and alien and you just can't keep, keep your eyes from her. She'd be a worthy winner, mm. for sure. Mm. I think, I feel like, for me, definitely, probably Isabel Uppert, because she's just... Again, I don't know, it's the same thing with Casey, Casey Affleck. She's just been winning award after award after award after award that she's got so much momentum now that I think if she doesn't win it, it would be quite surprising. I think Natalie Portman might be the biggest like challenger to it because I just yeah I also thought she was just absolutely incredible. But yeah, I think Isabel Hubert's performance of that category is the most like nuanced by far. The character she created has so much going on, there's so many layers there, um, and yeah, like you say, she's been picking up a lot of awards over the year. It'd be good mm -hmm. to see her take it. Yeah. Yeah, although I'm very happy just to see Ruth Negger because I didn't think she was going to get nominated because she hasn't been getting nominated a lot and. She's so, so good in that film. And Joel Edgerton's really good in that film as well. And I'm just glad that someone recognised Loving. <laughs> <laughs> show some love to Loving. Right. Yeah, show yeah. some love to Loving. Because <laughs> it's a really great movie. I think it's interesting as well that we've not really spoken about Emma Stone. I mean, I think she's the best thing acting-wise in La La Land. And yet it was like, yeah, whatever. Uh, which would mean if Ryan Gosling did win, that would be a uh, best actor. That would be awful because she's so far, she's much better than him, I think, yeah. in that film. She's like the... I'd, if, I'd say she's the lead if you had to have like a yeah. lead in that yeah. film. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> All right, moving on to actor in a supporting role. There's Mahashala Ali for Moonlight, Jeff Bridges for Hell of High Water, Lucas Hedges in Manchester by the Sea, Dev Patel for Lion, and Michael Shannon for Nocturnal Animals. Visible excitement for Michael Shannon. <laughs> it's, it's, it's like, it's, I hate Nocturnal Animals, but I'm just so happy that finally the film's been nominated for something that it actually deserves, which is his performance in Nocturnal Animals. I get the sense, though, that in Nocturnal Animals, he knew it wasn't good. And he's like, OK, <laughs> I'm just going to... Wow. And I think he... Yeah, no, and he just threw everything at this role, and he is brilliant in this film. Yeah, he really I is. I thought that he was dying. He looked like he was... <laughs> exactly, exactly. <laughs> Method acting. But yeah, I, um, I'm just so happy finally the film's got a nomination that it deserves. Because Aaron Taylor Johnson won the Golden Globe for this, right? Mm. Yeah. And even he didn't see that coming. Um, so yeah, Michael Shannon all the way. 
That's because Evening. Aaron Taylor Johnson wasn't very good in that film. <laughs> I liked it. He was. I thought it was I so OTT. It's kind of. Oh, yeah. Not my I, feel bag. Like, I feel like we could have done as good a job as Aaron Taylor Johnson. <laughs> <laughs> Bold statement. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> GCSE you drama. Listen to the Academy. <laughs> Mahershala Ali, like, I'm such a huge fan of his. Like, he's got this quality to him that whenever he's on the screen, I'm always so focused on him. But my only thing with that is he's probably in about three minutes of the film. Yeah, <laughs> So yeah. I, don't, I don't know how much that should be taken into account, but... Well, it's funny, because last time... Sorry to bring it back to Michael Shannon, because I think that's what, <laughs> what, that's what we're going to do now. When he was nominated for Revolutionary Road, he was nominated in, for a supporting actor. Um, and I think a lot of people are forgetting that. He was nominated, he didn't win. But he was only in the film for a few scenes. So he's kind of like... Mahershala is the um, is the Michael Shannon of, of this year in that sense. He it's good that he's got recognised for it. Probably won't win it, but he will be nominated again in the future, hopefully. Mm. Um, yeah. Well, I feel like he might win. I would maybe. I feel like this is maybe the one that's most yeah. up for contention, but I feel like it's edging towards him. Do you think they're going to want to yeah. award and honour Moonlight in some way, I think, and I think like that could be the way to, to do it. Yeah, and if he I'd wins, like, he's winning for the entire cast in a way, because I think that's maybe the reason that he's nominated, is that he's the most well-known name out of the male cast. So they're like, OK, let's put all... He can be, like, the spokesperson for the entire mm. male cast of Moonlight, yeah. almost. So it's like, in a way, they're not just rewarding one person, they're rewarding, like, a group of people, you know, <laughs> almost. Which would be lovely, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think he's got it for Moonlight. I yeah. think he's the, like, the, even though he's only in the first third, he is, but he completely steals every scene he's in. And I think he bounces off, like, Janelle Monae is in that seat, and as his girlfriend as well. And the two of them have incredible chemistry. I think it really works. But I'm just a massive fan of that film, so, and also, like the other people here, like Jeff Bridges for Hell or High Water, I hope it doesn't go to him because I don't think it's particularly deserving. Even Jeff though Bridges I, has done better work than that. Yeah, exactly. Work. Like I love Jeff Bridges, but for that film, it's. Did you understand the word he said in the film? Because <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I was transfixed, but I, I didn't know what he was saying. Well, it's funny, you know, we were saying earlier about, um, you know, bringing it back to Michael Shannon and Jeff Bridges both playing these old white almost retiree cops kind of going for some kind of semi-revenge <laughs> story. Very, very similar characters. And it's strange to see them both nominated for basically the same role in the category. Um, but I'm not sure who else would have gone there. Do you think there's anyone no, who's missing? I, no, it's probably some role. No, yeah, nothing does actually jump out there. Um, Lucas Hedges, remind me, is that is that Patrick in Manchester by the Yes. Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. he would, I think, because Casey Affleck's probably going to dominate the leading role, he doesn't stand much chance, but I thought he was very good in that yeah. film. He was great. I thought he was amazing. To hold his own. Yeah. I, and it's great for Dev Patel, actually, like, to be getting these nominations, because I think all his, uh, all the Skins cast, the ex-Skins cast will be just really jealous. <laughs> so I think it's really good. But yeah. Well, I, it's one of those weird things, again, that he's been... It's like, is it Rooney Mara last year where it's like a lead role that's been nominated for supporting actor? Because he's like the yeah. lead in yeah. line. That's so weird. <laughs> and it makes no sense. So I feel like it makes it really hard for him to win that because everyone's going to look at it and be like, well, he was great, but he wasn't a supporting <laughs> actor. Yeah. So I don't know if that hurts his chances. Because otherwise I'd say maybe he's a strong, I don't know. Mm. I do think, I, do, I personally think Michael Shannon will take it. I really do. I think if they, they wouldn't nominate him unless he was going to win it. I really feel like that. I don't know if that's wishful thinking. <laughs> and now I just really want to see like an, a film with Jeff Bridges' character in Hell and Michael Shannon's in Nooktown Animals, like a shared universe film. That'd be so good. <laughs> just they just teamed together. up as, but yeah, that'd be so great. I just want to see his acceptance speech because he's so stoic. He'll just be like, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> oh God, it's got to happen. <laughs> An actress in a supporting role is um, Viola Davis for Fences, Naomi Harris for Moonlight, Nicole Kin Kidman for Lion, Octavia Spencer for Hidden Figures, and Michelle Williams for Manchester by the Sea. I actually thought Naomi Harris was really, really good in Moonlight. Mm. She was really good, a constant throughout that film. Mm. Yeah, D completely deserved. And again, I, I, maybe unexpected, I don't know. Yeah, probably quite unexpected, perhaps. But. Yeah. Um, I'm surprised by Michelle Williams because I felt yeah. like she wasn't really in Manchester by the Sea that much. And so it kind of, I'm not sure she would, because she gave it, she was obviously very good in it. There's that one incredible kind of, scene where they have the breakdown when they, the reunion meeting. Yeah, exactly. It's good in, but that's Where the, she wants to take him for lunch, but then yeah. it's just yeah, other than that. Yeah. yeah, it's almost like 
she's so good in that one scene that I feel like it feels like a way more full performance from that because yeah. it does feel mm. like she does more in that film even though acting wise it's essentially just that scene and then she's like floating around a bit in other places yeah, <laughs> we're just so used to seeing her in really emotional films about yeah. like <laughs> relationship breakdowns yeah, yeah yeah so we think what viola davis maybe has that yeah i reckon so um maybe michelle williams could be like a surprise one but i'd say viola davis yeah Especially if that's probably going to be Fences only award, perhaps. Yeah. Yeah. Viola is a good good one to give it to. Yeah. And then uh, moving on to directing, it probably might be a contentious topic. Uh, we've got Arrival, Hacksaw Ridge, La La Land, Manchester by the Sea, and Moonlight. And no Nocturnal Animals, which, god damn it, if it did do one thing right, it was beautifully directed. Fair play. It, 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 he, Tom Ford, can direct things. That's mm -hmm. very true. If there's one person you want to shoot you, it's Tom Ford, because yeah. he'll make you look stunning. Good. <laughs> yeah. But he just won't direct you to an Oscar nomination if you're Amy Adams. Uh, <laughs> but, yeah. I feel... I'm just really happy, and I'm, I'm bringing it full circle to Arrival, that Denis Villeneuve has been nominated for Arrival. Mm. He's been doing such good work, mm. uh, like from Enemy to Sicario and uh, even Prisoners. And he's directing the Blade Runner sequel, which Makes puts that in good, very good stead, that yeah. And I'm just, I just think he, he's a bit of a Christopher Nolan in that respect, only he's beaten Christopher Nolan to a directing nomination. But I don't, yeah, that's fine. But I think... Uh, <laughs> I'm not mad. It's I'm not fine. mad. <laughs> no <laughs> issue. But yeah, I'd love, to, I mean, what do you guys think about who's, who's going to win? I'm, I don't know. I want, yeah, probably Damien Chazelle, because I think yeah, yeah. pulling off what La La Land is, you know, inside the genre of the musical, and it's modern and it's old at the same time, and he's mixing up so many things, and all the choreography and the music, and trying to put all of that together, like, I think that is a true challenge for a director, yeah. and just to see him pull that off is kind of incredible, and I think people shouldn't, like, underestimate that technical side of it, of just, mm, you know, absolutely. that it was a director is, is trying to bring all of these elements together, and I think... He is a craftsman and yeah. he directed the hell out of that film. Yeah, you see the, uh, the things floating around today from the camera operator of him directing the camera operator while they were doing the jazz scene and him just like tapping him on the shoulder and getting him like switching back and forth. It was, he was so like kinetic and it was amazing. But yeah, I can't see how you can't give it to Jamie and Giselle. Um, it was an amazing thing. Like if you, if you were put in the situation of you have to try and direct La La Land or you have to try and direct Moonlight, it's very clear which one you're gonna, probably more likely to have a stab at, isn't it? And you might get, get close <laughs> to it. <laughs> Whereas the thought of trying to do La La Land, yeah, that's the fun. Yeah. yeah. He's, a, he's, a vision, he's a bit of a visionary. Yeah. Uh, he's, he's 32 years old and it's pretty incredible. incredible. Yeah. Um, well, and it makes me very jealous. Yeah, I've had yeah. like three life crises. He's trying yeah. that out. Damien's <laughs> not helping that since <laughs> like his third, third proper feature. Yeah. And as amazing as Whiplash obviously was, um, it was all very locked down in terms of locations and setups. Whereas this he was doing, you know, out on highways and just Harbors unbelievable and stuff, that yeah. he pulled that off at such a for a relatively young age. Mm. And now he's doing like a Neil Armstrong boat, like it's just swinging in completely yeah. different direction. Which is still going to be jazz based, I hope. That's Hopefully. <laughs> we'll play jazz on the moon. <laughs> Mel Gibson got nominated, which I think five years ago would have been, no one would have expected it. And uh, I just think it's kind of sewn up his Hollywood comeback yeah. in a way. Yeah. Uh, I, I, like you, have my issues with the first half of the film. It, is, it feels a bit Lifetime movie ish, but the, the battle sequences are some of the best, I think, directed battle sequences I've seen. Fair. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I don't think it will. Nah. Mm, no. Filler. <laughs> Filler. <laughs> Filler Gibson. <laughs> um, right, so then we'll move on to adapted screenplay and original screenplay. Um, so adapted screenplay is Arrival, Fences, Hidden Figures, Lion and Moonlight. Original screenplay is Hello High Water, La La Land, The Lobster, Manchester by the Sea and 20th Century Women. These categories for me are just an exercise in realizing that things were adapted that you didn't realize were. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I didn't know that Arrival or Moonlight actually had been a bit adapted, but there you go. Yeah. But yeah, I guess the, the surprising one there in, in the original screenplay is that The Lobster got a mention. It just seemed like, it was like a long time ago that for film. Us it is, isn't it? Yeah. Think, okay, about, what, 2015? In the UK, yeah. yeah. It feels like so long ago. <laughs> yeah. um, I, I liked it though. I don't know about you guys. It, yeah. got, a lot of, yeah. it got a lot of hate, but I really enjoyed it. Oh, and I think it's very well written as well, so yeah, I'm happy hilarious. to see it. Yeah, I think yeah. It's, it's brilliant in that respect. I'm happy to see uh, Hello High Water there. I know, I think I enjoyed it more than um, you two at least. But I think it's re I just think it's one of the films that it's kind of cut from the same cloth as uh, Coen Brothers, and I, that's how I felt. And they yeah. always write things well, don't they? They do. So, um, and it's, uh, it's Taylor Sheridan who wrote um, Sicario, and I think he's just kind of now becoming like the go-to screenwriter, so I think it's 
it's good that he's getting Oscar nominations. Mm. I think ad adapted screenplay, that could be a rival's true chance at actually winning something. I mean, it was based on a really short novel and then expanded to bring in all these kind of twists and turns and stuff. So, you know, it was really clever. And I, it was one of the first films I've seen where I've genuinely been surprised by a twist in recent times. I think it's, you know, better than things like Interstellar and stuff Ooh. like that, which I, On yeah. I no, I wasn't a big Interstellar fan. I think Arrival was superior. Um, but I think, uh, you know, Arrival was just a brilliant film. And I don't think it will get Best Picture. So I think if it does stand a chance, even though it's against Moonlight, yeah. I think that could be where. I feel like it'll be hard to beat Moonlight in that category, just because it because it is such a big tussle between La La Land and Moonlight. I think yeah. if there's ever a category in which Moonlight and La La Land are not in the same category, I feel mm. like people are automatically going to be like, oh, Moonlight. <laughs> um, but yeah, and I like seeing uh, what I really like about the screenplay. Um, categories is that because it's split into two you do end up seeing stuff like the lops and also 20th century women it's just really nice to see that kind of film honored where it just didn't have a chance in any other category so um even though it won't win i'm just happy to see it there <laughs> so it's it like, nice. it's, it's, I feel like just below the list was everybody wants some richard ling later because i think that would have been i think that's one of his best written films personally I'm, yeah. I, I don't know if I am in a minority, but I really do feel, feel that. Yeah, I could see it would have been mm. maybe deserving a screenplay. Yeah, I get that. if anything, yeah. uh, you know. I guess because it always feels so improvised. Oh, that's why I always feel with Richard Linklater. It, yeah. I know that he does write a script, but it feels like he didn't. Yeah. <laughs> to be fair, that's when he has gone into like a house. He's gone, just have a party yeah. <laughs> and I'll direct you. It's and great writing. And then I'll write the script afterwards <laughs> yeah. and say that I did it. <laughs> Retrofit that script. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> And then animated feature film, we got um, Kubo and the Two Strings, Moana, the indie oddball as it always is, My Life as a, Zucu as a Zucchini, <laughs> The Red Turtle and Zootropolis. Um, Jack, I know you're a big Zootropolis fan, right? Yeah, I loved Zootropolis. I thought it was hilarious. Um, you know, it's probably one of... I was trying to think of the other Disney films that came out last year. It was kind of... Ooh. Well, Finding Dory. Finding Dory, yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm glad Finding Dory didn't get anything here, because I just thought one of not particularly great Pixar film and also they kind of they should go back to doing originals their originals always way superior mm. but Zootropolis was hilarious and the scene with the sloth was incredible so that is so funny um, yeah I haven't actually seen any of the others <laughs> well, I, I really do love Cuba and the Two Strings I think it's just a really um, it's a really humble film from Laika, who did The Box Trolls and Coraline. And I think um, they're really coming to their own. And I just know for a fact that they, they're the type of studio that would just be, this would mean the world to them, getting this Oscar nomination. It would, and it, it, it would mean more to them than most of the others. So I think, oh, well, maybe not the Zucchini dude, but whoever, <laughs> whoever that may be. But I think um, they, they really are, you know, they could one day be on a par with churning out content as good as Pixar. So good for them. And I think having two Disney nominated films in the category this year might actually mean that Kubo wins or My oh, Life as a Zucchini wins because maybe the votes will be split because I feel like it's so hard to beat Disney in this category yeah. because every year they produce something that's just very quality and everyone loves it and so it, they just end up kind of winning automatically but I think maybe because there's two and I don't know how split the audience would be between Moana and Zootropolis it might be that something just manages to like sneak round and i'm not sure which out of the other three would win because they've all been kind of like equally hyped yeah. i feel yeah. like maybe cooper maybe, maybe cooper it would like be a lovely. little bit more yeah. yeah i do think it's just gonna i think zootropolis just um maybe because it's a case of zootropolis came out or zootopia in the states it came out before it and that and it's just had a lot more word of mouth uh and it is very good as well so I, I'd love Cubo to steal it, but I think Zootropolis, I think it's Zootropolis is taking, mm. personally. And then all the other remaining awards, we're not going to go into them, but even though they're all very, very important in their own way, but I mean, <laughs> we imagine that La La Land's going to sweep a lot of the board in a lot of the musical categories and a lot of the hair and makeup type categories. I mean, it's got a record number of nominations, right? Do we think potentially a record number of awards? I don't know. I don't. Yeah, um, I'm not sure, because I think, What's so great about this year is that there's so many like other quality films, and I'm trying to think big sweep like the year that Lord of the Rings like swept everything. There wasn't really anything that was like mm. 
oh, this is such a big battle between... Everyone knew that Lord of the Rings was going to win everything because mm. that was the film of that year. And I feel like this year, you know, between La La Land and Moonlight and, like, even Manchester by the Sea, there's so many different films that people have really, like, adored and fallen in love with. And I think... Yeah, I don't know. I'm not so sure that it's going to automatically just win everything. I think, conversely, I think it's a good year for La La Land to be out. I think if it was up against the year where we had, like, Birdman and Boyhood, then it would be there would be more competition. But I think it's quite there for the taking, really, and I could see it picking up a lot. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, I think I agree. I think, you know, you look at original score and original song, and it will sweep those categories quite easily. Mm. Sound editing and mixing. And, exactly. Yeah. You know, there's four awards it's taken. And I think, it, you know, a couple of the others, hair and makeup it can't take because it's not actually oh, up for that. Yeah, that's, that is true. Um, it's the weirdest category. <laughs> it's just the yeah, random got, film. Yeah, yeah, makeup and hairstyling for the record is A Man Called Ove, Star Trek Beyond and Suicide Squad, notoriously panned film. <laughs> <laughs> but hey, the, the makeup and hairstyling was just... good. Killer <laughs> Croc will win it for Suicide Squad. I, mean, I think it's... Um, like, the sound editing and sound mixing, you'd think it's La La Land's to take, but, like, Arrival has, um, you know, could, could, could win, yeah. and, and, and no one would really be surprised. I hope it's one of them years where, like, the year when the King's Speech won pretty much everything. But then when you, like, if you go on Wikipedia and you see who won the most that year, uh, Inception is tied with King's Speech, <laughs> and no, yeah. probably people forget that, and I'd love it to be, like, you go on after, the, um, you know, after the ceremony's been, and it's La La Land and Arrival Tide. That would be so good. I was thinking, like, the sound design in Huxley Ridge was amazing. I felt like I was being yeah. blasted out of my seat, like... Because, yeah, yeah, I feel like a lot of the technical awards are... Because that's the thing, La La Land, in terms of, like, that technical side of it, might not win so much because I feel like that tends to go to more kind of action-y, yeah. like, serious war stuff <laughs> or like Arrival I think like Arrival Hacks or Ridge I feel like it might lose out to them in the more kind of very technical side of it um yeah. see Rogue yeah. One take a few awards that'd be fun that would be nice which one Rogue One. Oh, Rogue One well my least favorite friends of the yeah, yeah. <laughs> so nice. no, go there. and I think the surest bet is foreign language isn't it yeah Tony Tony, Tony, Tony and we're all massive fans of yeah really really it'd be really such a well-deserved win all right, thanks guys for that today. And um, yeah, Sunday, 26th of February is when we'll find out who actually picks up these things. Cheers. Bye.